Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby meets Bling. Today I will be creating, I should say tonight, tonight I will be creating something for fall. So goodbye summer, hello fall. <laughs> and of course I will be utilizing thrifted items. You are watching It Can't Sleep Creations Collaboration. And once again, I am joined by two fabulous women. They're not only dear, dear friends, but they are crazy talented. Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones and Monica of Up All Night DIY. I am going to have the links to their channels and the playlist in the description box below. As usual, my project begins with thrifted items. And I picked up this little trash can, which I thought was adorable, at Goodwill. And uh, she's perfect for what I have in mind. And then here's another thrifted item that I picked up. It uh, is a fall arrangement. And it's not my style. It's really, I think the scarecrow's a little on the tacky side. And the flowers aren't, aren't I don't think, quality. So I'm going to rip this apart and I'm going to use it for the little pumpkin uh, floral container. I'm going to just rip it apart and um, there you go. <laughs> and then we will begin. I am beginning with a little trash can. I'm going to fill it all the way to the top. Not to the top. I shouldn't say that's not true. <laughs> I'm filling it um, about two thirds full with uh, scrappy foam. Just hot glue and my scrappy foam. And once again, I dare myself. I, da I can't do it, you guys. I can. <laughs> It's so handy. It's so useful. It makes it, you know, something that's trash into a treasure. <laughs> so I am filling my little bucket with scrappy foam. Now that I have packed my trash can with foam, I am adding some moss. And I'm adding two types of moss on the bottom where you're not going to really see it. I've got the green Spanish moss. And on top, I have the forest moss. Then I'm going to create... Uh, a little divot, a little hole in the center, a space where there's no moss because this is where my form is going to protrude from. Come out of, <laughs> come out of the can. <laughs> so we need to use some star foam, some block star foam, and we are creating this form that is going to come out of my little trash can. <laughs> You know me, if I make a, a figure, I need to elevate it and put it on a pedestal. So uh, I figured that this is a trash can and your trash can sits out by the curb waiting for the garbage man to pick it up. So it's usually sitting on concrete or on grass. Well, mine's gonna sit on grass. So I'm using that indoor outdoor grass uh, carpet stuff and I'm just going to trace this wood circle and then I'm going to cut it out and make sure that it is the exact size for my little wood medallion. I want a tiny, tiny bit of hangover and then I am going to, to glue it into place and I'm gonna actually glue it on the upside down side, the bottom side, <laughs> the reverse side of the little uh, wood medallion. This thing was meant for a cloche. I buy these things all the time. They are so handy for so many things. You can make signs with them. You can use them for the shenanigans I do. Uh, so many things. So if you see them, pick them up. But glue, I am gluing here. I am using my B7000 and I'm using hot glue and I'm gonna get this little patch of grass in place. Now that we have our cute little patch of grass in place, we need to get our trash can adhered to this little little medallion, this little riser, this little disc. So I am drilling a couple of holes through the bottom, which was the top. <laughs> so confusing. Drilling a couple of holes through, and then I am going to take a couple of very long screws and get them started in the base. Get them started so that it's just the very uh, top of the the screw pops through I'm feeling there so you can see so they're there right there and then I have to center my little trash can and it's not like you can measure with this grass because it moves on you so I'm just kind of eyeballing it 
and once I figure out where exactly I want it, I try to keep it in place. Once I'm sure, I flip it over and I screw it really tight right through the bottom of my little trash can. No messing up or I'm going to create a whole lot of holes that are unnecessary. So I need to get it right the first time. Now that my little grassy base is completed, I make my little figure more permanent. I hot glue him and then I'm going to run a stake all the way through his little little form all the way down through all that foam in my little trash can. Since I do have two screws in the bottom of my base, I didn't want it to scratch furniture if I were to set it on something that's not like a countertop. So I am just tracing a little piece of cardboard that I cut out earlier and Blue is helping me. <laughs> he thinks he thinks I had it in the wrong place and he wants to move it. So I'm just tracing the <laughs> little the little piece of cardboard onto my green felt and I'm gonna cut it out and Blue and I are going to glue it. He's gotta be careful because I don't like when he plays with the glue gun. We are going to glue it to the bottom of our base. Okay, another thrift shop run. I grabbed these uh, corn husk and uh, some other cute little things that will come in handy later. But uh, right now I got the corn husk and I got these little hands. So these will be used in my project today. Now we need to address that star foam form. And if you notice, I added a little extra block onto the top of it for a little more height. I didn't feel it was tall enough for what we're making. And I'm going to cover this entire thing, the entire thing, in corn husk. We have a really good start on our trash can with that corn husk form inside. But now we gotta get going on that little pumpkin floral container. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are not suffering from deja vu. Um, we are also covering our little pumpkin container in corn husk. And yeah, you might think I'm nuts because it's already covered in corn husk, but it's orange. And I didn't want to paint it because I want it to match the corn husk we already used. So I figured best bet, I'm going to just cover it. I'm going to cover the entire thing in corn husk. I want my little pumpkin container on the bottom to to be more rounded and I want to have it have more height so or depth depending on how you're looking at the moment so I'm carving out some of my scrappy scrappy foam and I'm creating kind of like a little dome shape once I have my dome shape cut and it's not perfect it's but I am gonna glue it onto the bottom Because we have a little bit of a lip here with the overhang of the corn husk and I need it to be flush, I am adding some little strips of foam, just hot gluing them in, and I'm going to go all around the perimeter there so that the corn husk and the edge of my pumpkin container are even. By adding that strip of foam right around the lip of my little pumpkin container, I have created a little area where I can glue some straw to and I'm gonna glue straw all the way around and this is not fun it was not fun it was not easy straw and corn husk do not glue well they don't they're a natural <laughs> they're natural and they don't want there's almost like a slickness to the straw that fought me every step of the way but I did it. We did it. We got it covered all the way around. So <laughs> this is what we're left with. This weird looking pumpkin straw whatnot. <laughs> there it is. Remember those goofy little thrift store hands? Time to do something with those. Here's our weird little doll hands. <laughs> First thing I need to do is chop off that joint. 
it's got to go because I don't have a socket on my little form to put these little uh, little arm joints into. So we got to cut them off. Then I'm going to wire each arm. I am just taking some pretty decent gauge wire. I'm going to shove it up into the little hand with some hot glue and some foam and voila. Now it's time for paint. <laughs> Let's paint it. <laughs> I don't know why I like painting so much. I just, I just do. Okay, so there is no paint color that I could find that looked like this corn husk. So I'm mixing my own, and I will leave the different paint uh, that I used in the description box. So if you ever want to duplicate corn husk paint color, you can. <laughs> and I am mixing four different colors to get what is pretty darn close to this corn husk color. Once my paint is mixed, I am giving my little hands two coats of paint. I want to add some detail to my little hands, so I'm going to try to kind of make it look like the corn husk. I am using what's called a flat wisp brush. It has it's kind of like a almost like a little rake, which is really cool. And I'm creating little lines all across both of my hands. Once the paint is dry from that flat wisp brush that I used, I am coming back in with a little bit of a darker color and I'm using just a liner brush, a really tiny liner brush, to add even more dimension to my little hands. So you've probably deduced we're making a scarecrow. Well, you've guessed correctly, or you just read the thumbnail. <laughs> Either way, scarecrows need clothes. Let's make little guy some clothes, shall we? So here's our little scarecrow. And you can see that right here, he's, he's naked. He's unclothed. And he's sad because his clothes are gone. So we need to make him some. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to create a template, which I've already done out of paper. And this is kind of like a dry fit, like uh, Project Runway. <laughs> we, are fitting, we are fitting our model. And I just want to see if this is going to work. And it does. So now I'm going to create a more stable template out of cardboard. So here is my cardboard strip. And I even created a couple of straps for his overalls. <laughs> How you gonna keep them up if you don't have them strapped? So I've got straps. And now I'm going to use this. And it is a yard waste bag. And if you're gonna be in a garbage can, um, what are your what is your outfit gonna be made of? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna use you're gonna use that yard waste bag that's in the can with you, right? <laughs> I am cutting a front and a back for the overalls and a front and a back for my little straps. So that means I'm going to actually glue inside that cardboard template for more stability. And that way I'll be able to bend it and form it around his little tiny body. Once the body part of his overalls are complete, I use the exact same process when I create his little tiny straps to hold up his little overalls. <laughs> we know when I'm falling down. <laughs> we are now at the point where Huck, yes, I named him. Don't, don't even try to act surprised. I named everything. Well, little Huck needs some facial features and he needs some accessories. These are some of my leaves and I do have them available on Etsy and I'll leave the link in the description box. I am trimming them thinner than what they are available because I want them to have a different look. Just the use I'm, I'm going to be using them to look like real leaves. So I'm slicing them thinner and I'm going to be painting them in beautiful fall colors. I know since Huck is in a yard waste bin, I will be using some of these sticks um, as part of the decor. Here are some other items I picked up resale that will probably get used. I mean, has potential. The little uh, berries I love, and I love these little gourds and these little pumpkins. And I, I got this whole bag for a dollar, so 
and they're they're really quality they're adorable so i'll probably use these huck has reassembled himself as best he can from the depths of that yard waste bin and he would like to meet all of you the yard waste bin sitting in the grass out by the curb and there you get a good look at all the spillage as good old Huck pushed his way out of this bin saying, I am not ready to go to the compost pile. There's a look at his hand. It turned out pretty good. The color matches really well. And there's our little Huck. There he is. He managed to make some eyes, nose, and mouth out of what he found in that little compost bin. Huck is an in-the-round sculpture, which means he's meant to be viewed from all sides. So I had to make sure that no matter what view you had of him, he looked good. And you can see his little overalls out of that yard waste bag. He did a pretty good job. He even managed to create a little basket out of all the goodies he found in the bin. And it's removable. I cut it so that you can take it off his hand if you want. You can display him with the basket or without. And he seems pretty happy about it as well. I mean, let's face it, he's just happy not to be shoved in that yard waste bin anymore. You can see all the different leaves painted in those beautiful fall colors in all the corn husk and straw I used. And you can even see his little blueberry buttons on his overalls. How cute. And remember to watch the entire playlist. You'll be glad you did. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Share it with your family and friends and anyone that loves fall decor. You can follow me on Instagram and you can check out my shop on Etsy. You can show your support by subscribing. So don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling and Huck. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.